Hey guys, my name is Manik and welcome back to Mastering EDM with FL Studio. So today we're going to do a review video and for this sake, uh, you're actually going to see another video come up pretty quickly here uh, right after this one just because this is going to be a review video. So uh, since I'm not really covering anything new, uh, I'm just going to do another video right after this one for you guys to have. Uh, but we're going to set up a project in here that we're going to use for the following videos uh, just so we could kind of, you know, start to get into the groove of producing electronic music. So um, that said, I'm gonna go pretty quick. So if you get lost through the video somewhere, uh, I strongly suggest you go back and either watch the previous videos or you go back to where you got lost in this video and kind of watch. I'm gonna go quickly just because I want you to be able to follow me quickly uh, simply because it's important that you gain that ability to identify things as fast as you can. Uh, so I'm not gonna try to outpace you entirely, but I'm gonna try to do this a little quickly. So uh, hopefully you can catch up and if you can't, like I said, you could always go back and check things over again uh, so you could get a better feel for things. So first of all, we are going to add a Fruity Dance because FL Chan has been missing from the past couple of videos because she was on vacation. But she is back now. So actually, you know what? Put her here. There we go. Hang out there. Thank you. Um, so now, the next thing we're going to do here is just go about creating a simple pattern that we could drop into our playlist. So um, we won't do anything fancy. We'll just have our simple standard kick drum loop and then we'll paint this in here and uh, if I play this back there's nothing too stupendous about it but uh, we're gonna just use this as our foundation so what we're gonna do here now is go to patterns and we're gonna hit R to rename it we're gonna name this kick just because uh, that'll make things easy to separate out and uh, we could have that separate from everything else. You'll find that having the kick separate is pretty important because um, not so much that you wanna uh, you wanna have a lot of flexibility with changing things for the kick. It's just you don't want other things to uh, you know get in the way of changing uh, stuff. So for example, so I don't confuse you, uh, if we were to add a clap here and then a hi hat here and. Then if we wanted to change this pattern, we'd have to change this whole thing every single time. And by separating our kick out, it allows us to leave the kick how it is because it's pretty much always going to be doing that. And then instead we could go patterns, insert one by hitting I and then type, um, we'll do this, uh, percussions, percussions. So what we can do here now is throw our clap on and then just have our hat as well so that we could uh, drag this in and if we ever want to change it um, we could do that rather quickly and uh, just like duplicate this pattern change it we don't have to worry about messing up our kick somewhere along the line so we kind of have that separate just for the sake of keeping it how it is and keeping it static so now we have our simple pattern very stereotypical and normally i would change the kick sample and uh, some of the other samples around but um, I'm not going to do that right now for the sake of time just because uh, I don't find it's that important for this particular thing that I'm going to be using this project for in the long run. Uh, but like I said, try not to stay uh, with this kick or the clap or the hat just because they're too standard, too stereotypical, and quite frankly, they don't sound all that great. So I strongly suggest you replace those if you're uh, following along. Uh, otherwise, um, you know, if you just want to do things quickly like I am, uh, you don't have to. But uh, we have our clap, actually, uh, I might have called the clap a snare sometime, but don't worry about it. Uh, claps and snares are pretty interchangeable in the world of electronic music. So um, anyway, we have this, and now we're going to go into a little bit closer to what we had recently. So what we're going to do is add a 3x OSC, and we're going to actually start messing around in this. But first, we're going to go to the piano roll. Now, I believe, wow, this is new. Um, so I believe uh, I already talked, oh, that's why I accidentally, did I accidentally click the wrong one? Here, let's go to this one. Piano roll, there we go. I accidentally clicked her there. Um, sorry about that. And uh, so now we could go in and key something in here. So I'm just gonna do something really simple. Um, don't worry about the notes that I'm placing. I'm just doing it for the sake of, um, you know, something that I know will work. And um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a nice chord here. So I'm gonna copy these by holding shift and dragging and then letting go of shift to a pull there. And we're gonna go one, two, three, and do this right, four, five, six, seven. And then it should sound like this. 
except one of the things I forgot to do was pattern. Actually, you know what? We'll do it this way. Do pattern clone and then rename this one to chords. Sweet. So um, now I'm going to paint this in here. Of course, it wiped it. Okay, uh, we'll try this again. So we'll get chords here. Delete that one. Yeah. Patterns. Percussions, because I accidentally put it in the percussions. And we could do clone. There we go. And then we have percussions number two here, which we can rename to chords. There we go. That's the way to do it. And then we could get rid of the percussions in this one and then go back to our percussions here and get rid of this. Now this is something that despite the fact that I kind of messed up in sticking things in the same layer, that's something you might find yourself doing. Whoops, that was the wrong button. Um, you might find yourself doing that occasionally. So it's kind of good to know that you could just clone and delete things uh, to remedy that. So now we're back to our chords and I could paint this in and we have this. So. Now we're going to go into 3x OSC and have some fun with this. So right now you can tell it's all sine waves, which is kind of boring. So we're going to do a little bit of white noise and then, well, that was not white noise. This is white noise. Uh, and then saw here and a square here. So just saw square white noise. Now I particularly like the noise that comes out when you do this combination. Uh, it sounds like this right now. I'm going to turn down the volume here just so it's not too. And then just to make things interesting, we'll turn up the detune on the saw here. And probably the detune on the square as well. So there we go. We have an interesting sound already. It's kind of like sounding like the decent foundations for a track here. And uh, it's not too bad. Now. We're gonna go in here and do some stuff with the envelope and uh, we'll just kind of do some basic things for the volume envelope here. So we're gonna reduce the attack so that's all the way down there. Reduce the hold so it's all the way down and we'll get this. Which sounds fine to me actually. Uh, I, I just wanted a little bit of release on there and uh, the decay is, is okay as well because it just adds a little bit of punch. But I might get rid of that later just for uh, illustrative purposes when we get into some other tools, uh, which we'll be doing in the next video. So, uh, but I may not change this in the next video. We'll see. Okay, so now the next thing we're gonna do is go to the filter here and we're gonna turn this down because this is our cutoff, remember? And then go into the mod X because that's what this one is. And then we'll just go, um, we'll make the amount go all the way up. So it's increasing this and we'll have a short attack, no hold, a short decay and no sustain. So it sounds like this. And then once again, we'll switch it to one of these ones. I don't remember which one I like more. There we go, this one's kind of nice. You know what, I like that one better. Okay, so that's just kind of, you know, switch to whatever one suits your taste. And then we have a nice synthesizer here. That kind of sounds, sounds pretty simple, but if we do this. Cool, huh? So we have a pretty flexible synthesizer. All we need to do is tweak this and uh, we can actually do something cool up here. Go to tools. No. I always forget where these things are because I hate menus. I usually use keyboard shortcuts. It is in tools. Last tweaked and then we can do create automation clip. So we can have fun with this one and then just we'll pull this up here. Yeah, we'll do that. And then we'll curve this a little bit just so it's you know, a little bit tasty. And then uh, we're going to have a little bit of fun here. And we're going to go to our patterns, select our percussions, 
and then we're going to clone it. And now we have a new one here and we'll actually go through and we're going to add a few more hits. So uh, let's try this. Yeah, like that, just to kind of change things up a little bit. So it goes like this. Sweet. So we actually have something that sounds like, you know, it's starting the uh, the foundations for a song. And uh, here, now I'm just going to save this and uh, pretty much we'll just cut to the next video here where we will start to talk about all the different plugins you could use here. Now, like I said, probably won't cover all of them, even though I just said I would. <laughs> um, the idea more is to cover the foundations of them. So like I said, with uh, in the case of 3XOSC, once you learn this one, uh, then you could actually uh, take the ideas that you learn and implement them in other things as well. So uh, that's that'll be the general premise of what we're doing here. I'll cover certain plugins and other ones I'll completely skip, but then you'll pop them open and you'll realize, oh, it's actually very similar to the other one over there. So it's not all that amazing in terms of you know doing different stuff. It's uh, mostly just uh, they each have their own space uh, specialty and they each are excel at one thing over another and it's just you know up to you to figure out which one to choose that suits a particular purpose but anyway thank you guys so much for watching this i hope this was good for a little review and uh, i'll see you in the next video where we start to cover a lot more stuff bye